I'm pleased to introduce our first paper presentation, which is Reproducible Graduate Theses in GI Science, presented by Carlos Granell. Thank you uh, for your presentation, for, for your introduction. Um, I'm going to talk to you about this um, activity that we uh, started um, by a few group of, of enthusiasts in open science. So all the, the, the figures and and or the diagram that I want to show today is basically they are in this URL, right? When you can find actually the full analysis of this of this uh, activity. So in order to start with, so I, I want to show you basically a bit of context, right? <clears throat> um, Agile is an association of geographic information laboratories in Europe. Uh, perhaps you in your USA no, don't know about that, right? But basically, this is an association of research groups, not individuals. And the main activities of the of the Agile Association is just to organize the main conference every year about GIS science and just to organize as well PhD schools and other initiatives related to GIS science teaching and research, right? So in this context, Actually, a, a group of few people, six, seven, uh, we organized in order to have a specific initiative, which is called Reproducible, Reproducible Agile. Based on this initiative, we already started with some workshops related to reproducibility, co-organized, uh, co-located with the main conference uh, in 2017, 18, and 19. We also do some kind of um, meta research paper uh, in order to evaluate the reproducibility level of the different agile conference papers submitted in the previous years. And most importantly, last year, we created a kind of author guidelines in order to provide some instruction for authors to submit reproducible papers to the conference, right? And uh, this year, even that the, the conference was cancelled at the end by, for, for the COVID, right? But um, we managed in order to evaluate um, the first, um, the, the full paper submission based on this reproducibility criteria, right? So um, this is basically the big context. And so far, we focus a lot on researchers, on authors to the conference, right? And our intention um, was to start a new activity in order to focus more on uh, increasing the awareness of this reproducibility practice in graduate thesis project. I mean, in master level students, right? Instead of focus more on researchers, so we want to focus more now in uh, early um, stage career, right? In research that is starting now, which will be actually future research in the future, right? Okay, so. I want to talk to you actually the experiment, the, 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 the activity that, that we did last year, right? So we have the participants who were basically students from two different uh, master programs uh, during the academic year 2018-20, right? So basically we have one master uh, of science in geospatial technology, um, uh, which is coordinated by three different uh, Euro, uh, European universities, one in uh, University of Münster in Germany, uh, Universita Jaume I in Spain, and the Lisbon University in Portugal. And the other master was the Master in Geomatics for the Built Environment, um, coordinated by the Technical University of Bell, right? What I want to talk to you, what I want to show to you today is basically the results for the first group of students, right? You can see the URL, the full analysis where we can compare the results for the two groups of students in order to, to move more quickly, right? Okay, the methodological approach that we follow in this activity was basically composed of four different methods. Um, the first one basically was a questionnaire in order to test the previous knowledge experience in research reproducibility practice of the students. This is actually a pre-test questionnaire. Then um, we develop a, a, a series of self-study assignments. Um, the students were in, enrolled in this master thesis project during one semester. So this means that the students can do the self-study assignment during the semester in order to introduce them uh, basic uh, reproducibility concepts, some basic readings and papers, and some interesting tools for, for reproduction. 
Then an important part of the of the methodology was a kind of uh, what we call self-evaluation sentence, right? Basically, which is a this was a very basic exercise in order to promote a kind of self-reflection uh, of the student on the level of reproducibility of his or her master thesis, right? And finally, at the end of the semester, we ran a second questionnaire in order to evaluate the, the gain knowledge in, in reproducibility research practices. Just a couple of words about the questionnaire. So in order to compare them, we had the p-test and protest. And the questionnaire, the first questionnaire, uh, was composed of three different blocks. Um, some questions about previous knowledge experience, uh, current work practices, and some uh, contacts, in order to get some contacts from there, which is previous education and, and previous work experience, right? Uh, for the second questionnaire, we focus only on two blocks. Uh, the first one is pretty much the same as the first questionnaire. So just to, to get now uh, the, the, the gain knowledge experience on reproducibility research. And we also ask about the perceived importance of reproducibility in the, in the future, right? After, after the master thesis. Well, um, based on a, a work of um, Fetcher and Frieske in 2014, uh, we choose a list of terms in order to all of these tests connected to open science in order to check the previous knowledge on reproducibility of the students, right? So according to this work, there are basically five different schools of thoughts. Uh, you can see in the table on the left. So basically they are democratic, pragmatic, infrastructure, public, and measurement. So for each school, we have some associated terms. For instance, for the democratic, we have open access, open data, open source, and so on. So basically we took the first four, democratic, pragmatic, infrastructure, and public, and we omitted actually the last one, which is not so, <clears throat> sorry, so interesting for the master level students okay so basically uh to for the question imagine that you are going to explain the following terms to somebody else how well do you know them right this is basically the the the, the content of the first block right for questionnaire one and questionnaire two and the response basically was a, a little a little base scale right from one to five uh, regarding the safer study training material, uh, all of them are public in a uh, open science uh, website, OSF website. So we develop a couple of videos in order to introduce the experiment activity and also to introduce the basic concepts about reproducibility. And we develop as well three different um, assignments, one one page assignments. Uh, you can see now in the right side, right hand on the on the slides. Um, Basically, was just to provide some basic readings and proposing a kind of um, some short questions on reflections based on these readings. And we also provided some uh, additional readings, optional reading uh, for the students that want to, to, to go deep in this, in this, um, in the different aspects that we propose in the different assignments. Okay. One important aspect of this activity was the self-assessment sentence, right? Um, in order to explain it, it's basically we, we, we took a proactive approach, right? Based, for instance, in this paper that say that science should be so mean, not trust me. So the idea was before to make the thesis public, so it was a good idea for the student to self-evaluate the level of reproducibility, right? Um, and this was actually the idea of the self-assessment set. For this, we need a kind of uh, assessment criteria, right? Two years ago, uh, the group of authors and others, we developed um, um, uh, some criteria, some uh, assessment framework in order to, build, to develop the level of reproducibility of the um, agile papers, right? So we come up with five different dimensions that you can see in the screen. Um, input data, methods, and results. But the method dimension can be subdivided, so we should divide it in three more, right? Um, related to methods during the preprocessing, uh, the method themselves, and the computational environment. So for each dimension, so you have actually a different level, right? From zero to three. 
Zero is basically not available. For instance, input data is not available in the paper, not mentioned, where you take the, the data. And if you assign a level three for input data, that means that actually this is the ideal case, right? It is available, open, and with a permanent URL of DOI. So the idea of the experiment was just to, for the students to evaluate the level of reproducibility according to this criteria and assign a particular level, right? So in the end, we get a kind of five-digit rubric similar to the example that I show you in the screen. Now, this is actually an R set of a thesis, and you can see highlighted in yellow that at the end of the R the student actually include one sentence, in this case, uh, with a numeric value, right? Two, one, two, one, one, which is actually the, the, the level for the input data, preprocessing methods, computational mining, and results. I move quickly now to the results. So this is actually the results of the first <clears throat> questionnaire uh, about the previous knowledge of the students. Uh, you can see that there are a lot of yellow, uh, especially in the top part of this of the of this diagram. So basically, for terms related to openness, right? Open source, open data, open access, which are more related with the democratic school. But you can see that other terms related to reproducibility, for instance, analytical workflow or containers, computational essays, and so on, are basically more in red, right? They are more less uh, um, knowledge by the students, right? Uh, regarding previous experience, we can see that actually the students already tried to um, reuse previous work and actually find found difficulties in using somebody else's code of data. And basically they perceive that reproducibility was really important for their careers, right? Just to come in quickly here that we ask as well for the current practices of the students in terms of what tools do you plan to use to analyze data in red here, to visualize data in blue, uh, the workflow that you plan to do in green and for writing up your thesis, what type of tool you are going to do, to use, sorry. Okay, the resource for the second question is basically after um, the experiment at the end of the semester, uh, we can see that we have more yellow here, right, on the right part. So this means that the students actually get more knowledge about the different terms that we ask. Um, and we can compare here actually the 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 different the level of knowledge for each term uh, between the, the the pre and post test, right? Uh, basically, all terms that like we have a, a shift to the to the right, which means that students at the end gain more knowledge about the different things that we ask here. All these diagrams are in this URL that you can see. Interesting, it's actually the resource of the self-evaluation sentence. Remember, this is actually the five digits rubric, right? So um, you can see the five different bar charts per, per dimension by criteria. So most of them actually evaluate at level two. For instance, for input data, we, we can see a lot of two level, which means actually that the data was uh, was accessible and public, right? And in general, we can see that in other criteria, actually the students, the score was really low, for instance, in computational environment, right? So the, I show you the result for one of the group, which is the, 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 the Master in Geospatial Technology. The other group, the DELF group, actually they didn't realize, they didn't did uh, or didn't add it actually this self uh, assessment sentence, but interesting, they include in their thesis a specific uh, section in order to describe the, the level of reproducibility in a narrative way. These are some examples that I'm going to, to comment here today, but you can see that this was actually really interesting for them to self reflect about the level of reproducibility before submitting the work for, for assessment, right? So, in order to finish the presentation, just I want to show you some concluding remarks. So, basically, based on this exploratory activity, we observe an increasing awareness about some reproducibility terms and concepts in all theses. Um, 
obviously, we did a kind of meta assessment in order to check the self-assessment of the students. And in our opinion, that the student self-assessment were generally too optimistic in terms that they evaluated using level two and three in this scale, which is quite, quite optimistic. Uh, some limitation of the study is that we didn't evaluate how self-study materials and self-assessment um, uh, sentence can influence the degree of reproducibility. So we need more data, more experiments in the future. And this is the idea of the uh, of the next um, sentence that I show you. It's basically just to uh, repeat this experiment in the future in order to get more data. And possibly maybe just to open the community to, to use some of the materials that we use here in this experiment to replicate in other settings. Okay. And one practical impact that we, we, we got from the experiment is that the, the organizer, the management of the master science on geomatic in Delft, actually, they like a lot of experiment and they introduced a new requirement for the new thesis this year. Uh, you can see highlighted here that this requirement was a self-evaluation of the full reproduction of the of the of the thesis. This is interesting, but this is now mandatory instead of um, voluntary and optional, right? Okay, so this is actually just to to finish with my presentation, just to present you as well the rest of the of the of the team that we are involved in this reproducibility agile uh, initiative. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, it was fascinating. So we do have a question, and that would be um, just you had talked about your next steps. So with that, you are just planning to continue additional data collection. Um, that's the idea, because this experiment was a kind of calibration process, right, in order to explore if the questionnaire were actually really aligned with the with with our objectives. And now we want to move forward in more in a serious way, right? You need to collect, to have right. a kind of longi longitudinal data in order to replicate. We have the benefit or the advantage that we can run this in different universities in different countries here in Europe. Um, and this is interesting just to get different contexts, right? From this. Yes, team. absolutely. And we can compare. Well, thank you so cities. much for sharing. Um, thank you for attending this first presentation. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for attending this first presentation. Um, for the ease of uh, transferring to your next paper presentation, we will all be returned to building one. And from there, you can select uh, which paper presentation you would like to attend next. So I will see you in one minute and we will start another paper presentation. Thank you so much.